It's the fastest way to the castle, my darling. It's the story of a lovely lady who couldn't keep her hands off a shiny thing. And a wizard who couldn't keep his hands off the same shiny thing. And a knight who was all, what's all this then? And tried to wrest it away from the other two of them. No dice. The net result was the three of them ended up getting smashed together into one existence, able to switch between forms at will. All the better for moderate puzzle solving while in a platforming action game. It's a gaming concept that's existed for some time now, from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES to Mega Man X3 to Final Fantasy X, changing the active character in order to better take on a particular obstacle. Difference is, while those other games tried to draw attention away from this mechanic, seriously, if Leonardo and Zero and Lulu are just standing by waiting in the wings, they can certainly come out here and help, Trine puts it front and center, spending the majority of the plot explaining it. So as this three-in-one protagonist makes his slash her slash his way toward curing this particular affliction, there's some really solid gameplay to be enjoyed. Each facet of this hero stew has a different skill set which can improve throughout the course of the game by obtaining experience points. I know, EXP and a platformer. Crazy, right? How about some equipable items, too, to boost various parameters of our heroes? Finding the right balance is key, as each plays much differently from the others. The knight is your standard sword and board fighter, specializing in melee combat and being able to lift heavy things, but is hampered by slow movement and limited maneuverability. The thief corrects those problems by being noticeably faster and bringing a grappling hook to the table, along with ranged attacks like standard and even incendiary arrows. The wizard... Well, the wizard's near useless in combat, except in situations where he can use the power of levitation to bludgeon enemies with various things lying about the ground. Or, of course, you can just do this. Ah, uh, yeah. Crushing your enemies with the power of a magicked up clockwork box of gravity plus four. That's how we roll here in our thoroughly detailed but fairly generic fantasy setting full of evil skeletons, where the music's far, far, far in the background so you can hear every bone-splintering attack in the foreground. It might not be anything to write home about from a story perspective, besides the obvious point of codifying the ability to switch between protagonists and their skill sets on a whim, but the mechanics of the experience more than make up for it. The game's physics allows for some pretty clever rope play, especially once you get the timing down, as well as other why-didn't-I-think-of-this-earlier techniques like jamming a box into a vertical wall of spikes to manufacture a platform. All these abilities and actions are controlled fairly intuitively with two-stick or mouse support for targeting on the run. Trine attracted quite the following, and then its sequel kicked all that up another notch, making it clear that this idea of hero switching wasn't just a fluke cooked up by some older titles. There's some real strategy to be applied here, and a light coating of RPG elements on what is otherwise an excellent, if sometimes overwhelming, platformer just brings out the flavor, like a can of Coke rammed up a chicken's cavity. I'll let you ponder that visual while I get back to the legal ramifications of being one-third of a thief. And you thought conjoined twins were confusing. We must hurry to the castle. And this is the way. Dragon Graveyard. So instead of small bones, we go where the big ones rest.